There you are. Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to make a quick video to show you some of the specific settings that I use in Sony Vegas Pro 11. Now, and if you remember in the last episode that I did about uh, how to record and live stream and the setup overview that I did on my process, Sony Vegas is one of the tools that I use. But I really briefly touched on a few things and didn't go into too much detail. Because of that, I got some messages and some comments asking to do specific uh, video information on how I handle uh, my editing process and my render settings and my project settings. So that's what we're going to go over today. I have a little bit of test footage here that is uh, just some quick footage I went over and, and went on the TGN server and recorded some stuff. Uh, it's nothing too amazing. Uh, it's kind of blotchy and I think it hangs at some point. I don't remember uh, But it's the purpose for this was just to show you that we have footage in inside the, the editor that we can go over and I'm going to go to a point in here so we get some visual change and Let me show you my project settings now what you can do is you go up here to the top uh, just like you did and click on that little button and you get a bunch of templates by default but I have one set up specifically for 720p gameplay footage. And you can just follow along with these settings if you want to test them out uh, for yourself. But for me, I render all of my footage out uh, and my project settings are set up for 720p if you're going to YouTube. The reason I do that is it's kind of pointless for me to render out at 1080 or record footage at 1080 because I'm not going to give my video content to anyone that's uh, actually going to play it back at 1080. Um, YouTube doesn't actually have 1080. They, they call it 1080, but it's really not. It's just a little enhanced 720. So you're really just um, hurting yourself if you're doing gameplay and you're recording and pushing out a rendered video at 1080. Uh, the I don't really care what people say. There's going to be people that are going to debate that, but it is the fact of 720 is as good as it gets. So uh, my width is uh, 1280, my height is 720, my field order I leave is none. My pixel aspect ratio should be one. My frame rate is 29.970. I usually record at 30 frames, but with uh, YouTube, anything above that's going to get cut out you're not going to see that that frame rate. So 2997 just standard. Uh, I think that's usually on most of the templates. What I change for the pixel format though is I go to a 32-bit floating point full range format. Now a lot of people will run 8-bit and for Minecraft it really doesn't matter all that much but I'm a very picky person so I like all the detail I can get so I run the 32-bit floating point and we'll apply that and it's already at 32 so you won't see a change but if we go let me move this over I don't know if you'll be able to see this but if I put this on 8-bit and I click apply and then I go back to 32-bit there's a little minute change right here in uh, the glass block that's in my bar and it's really hard to notice but if you use the Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere a lot and you edit a lot you'll see the minute little features and so it's just one of those things that's really going to help your video pop out and look a lot, as best as it can and look a lot better for full resolution rendering quality I always choose best I leave a low motion blur and deinterlace I leave those alone as well over on audio uh, I always set my sample rate at 192 my bit depth at 24 and resample and stretch quality is always set to best the other tabs I don't mess with, they don't really matter. Uh, you guys will have different folders and things that, that is where it all goes. So that's basically it for the project settings for my basic gameplay footage. Now I have some specific things that I'll change based on what game I'm playing, but in general that is, is probably as good as you're going to get if you want to run uh, 720 footage through Sony Vegas. So we've already got some video on here and we'll go over the render settings and then I'll show you guys a couple little things I use when I'm uh, editing to make things pop out a little bit better but for render settings I have two things that I use and it's not showing up for some reason 
Well, we'll go over this one first, and then I will show you guys my other one. Let me find it. Where is uh, where is it? Ah, there it is. Let me let me start that really quick. There we go. So the two things that I use are for rendering out is that MP4, which is an ABC AAC uh, render, or I will render out as WMV, which is Windows Media Video. Now the reason I have two different ones is I'm not really dead set on one or the other, and so I switch back and forth when I feel something works better in one than it does in the other. Uh, the benefits of one over the other is kind of a gray area, and the only thing I can really say is that WMV will give you better quality at a lesser size, so to speak, but a lot of that really depends on what you do in the video and, and how you set it up. So I can't say one's particularly better than the other one. They're both really good. But let's go into the MP4 uh, render settings that I have set up here. Uh, as, as always, I always render at uh, HD720, just like my project settings. I always match the frame rate so there's no blending or stuttering, things like that. If you mess up your project settings and you try to render out, it can screw things up sometimes. So you always want to make sure that they're matched. I uh, run a variable bitrate. That's all pretty standard. My pixel aspect ratio is one, as usual. Uh, I don't do any kind of field order. And uh, enable progressive download, things like that. So for audio, I run 48 for my sample rate. And for my bit rate, I run 192. Now, you can go down to 128 for your bit rate. It really doesn't matter as far as um, quality goes. There's no noticeable difference that I've been able to find. But I just go ahead and give it 192 for the just a little extra. And for system, we don't really care. But for project, I always go and make sure render, video, excuse me, uh, render quality is set to best. So we're going to click OK. Well, I'm just going to click Cancel. Uh, and for WMV rendering, we're going to customize template. And for this, you, you do the audio first in this tab. It's just how it is. But for the mode, we're going to use quality VBR. This is the best thing that I found as far as uh, Windows Media Video uh, renders go for quality on your audio format that you get. The reason I do this is uh, the um, attributes, I run uh, 98 for quality, 48 kilohertz, and stereo VBR. VBR is variable bitrate, CBR is constant bitrate. I have gotten a lot better uh, results by using quality VBR over CBR for the audio only. Now it doesn't have anything to do with video. So those are the settings I use for audio. For the video tab we do use a CBR mode for video on a WMV file. Uh, as I said earlier it is a constant bitrate. The format is Windows Media Video 9. The image size is 1280 by 720 just like my my project settings. My pixel aspect ratio is 1. My frame rate, just like the project, is 29,970. And I my keyframes are 5. Uh, the, uh, what is it, the compression is 3. And video smoothness. Now, some people will run this like down to, I think, 80-ish. Or maybe 85 or 90. I always like it to be as sharp as possible. So I just leave it at 100 to give it that little extra uh, crispness. So if that's even a word, <laughs> uh, but that's the best thing that I've found so far in, in my toying around with different render settings. So over on bitrate, this is the thing that uh, that kind of matters when you're doing uh, Windows Media Video. You want to go down to Internet and LAN, and the reason we're doing this is that back in the Video tab, we set the mode at CBR, which is a constant bitrate. So it's wanting that that kind of bitrate uh, or encoding. Um, encoding rate. So we're going to select internet and LAN and we're going to set it to 8 uh, megabits per second for uh, this setting for the CBR. Now I don't know what it is by default I think it's maybe 6 or something or 4 but if you set it at 8 that's going to give you the best that you can get for this type of gameplay footage or for the uh, for 720p. So index and summary doesn't really matter for project, for video rendering quality, again, just like in the other render settings that we went over for MP4, you always want to go down here and choose best. That's really going to help the, the render out. So we're going to hit cancel. 
and I'm going to hit cancel again on this. So those are my render settings. The tips that I can give you guys, like I said I was going to show you some of the things I do. Uh, like everyone I know under the sun tells other people to do, if you're in Sony Vegas, you always want to cl right click on any video footage that you have in your, in your timeline. You go to properties and you always want to click on disable resample. Now by default is on, it is on smart resample. What does this mean? People always tell you to do this, but they don't explain why. Well, by default, Smart re Resample is turned on. That is because Sony Vegas, in general, isn't really used for gameplay. It's used for, you know, audio, video, uh, multimedia. So it may not necessarily be gameplay. So in real life, when you're doing, uh, like, real-life footage of people or an event or something, Smart Resample's pretty good. You don't want to, uh, you usually don't want to turn that off. What happens if you leave Smart Resample on is when the game is playing or the footage is playing and it's not, uh, it's a, it is a video game, it will blend frames and it'll make it look kind of blurry or, or fuzzy, so to speak. And we don't want that. We want that crispness because we want to see the, the detail in the game. We don't want it to blend uh, like, you, like you would want it to in real life. So we always just want to disable resample. So I'll just click OK on that. I'm not really going to render this out, so it doesn't really matter. So I haven't done anything to this footage yet. It's just raw footage that I've I put in the timeline. And as you can see, it looks OK. I've got shaders on and everything. I ran GLSL on it. And it's OK. You know, default texture pack, whatever. I got some sunlight in here. I got some color. There's a little bit of contrast. But to me, it's kind of washed out. It, it looks kind of... Uh, like there's a haze, so to speak, over top of it, and that's just from the raw footage. So what I usually do is we'll go into video effects, and I do one of two things first. I'll either go to color curves, and we'll take the default color curves, and we'll come down here, and you drag it onto your video, and you get this little video effects window. And currently we're in the color curves section. Now, nothing has changed, so if we uncheck it, you won't see any difference in the video. But what I usually do is to make it very drastic, I'll drag this down to somewhere around there and then drag the other side up. And if you look, see how it, it brought everything out and then darkened all the darks. So it looks kind of too sharp, so to speak, or not, not really sharp, but too uh, contrast. So if we uncheck that, you see how that grayness comes back, that, that haze? So if we click it back and it pulls all this... Uh, craziness back out all the darks are dark we can take and turn this down a little bit and you see how that gray kind of comes back a little well we can fix that uh, by bringing the light out and there's you're gonna bring the light colors up uh, even more those lighter colors are gonna make those pop just a little bit more and then we'll bring the darks down just a little bit that looks alright so as you can see in this footage it looks a little more colorful it looks a little more uh, appealing to look at. It looks really vibrant uh, compared to the beginning. Now, I, I wouldn't render this out because it's not as good as it could probably be, but for an example, this is you know a good uh, starting point for you guys to play around with because it's going to change on every video that you do. It's There's no, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, like a magic button? <laughs> there's no magic video effect that's going to make it be perfect every time. So let's uncheck this and you see how it washed it out again? We're going to recheck it and then you can get an idea of the difference. So I'm going to do this a couple times so hopefully in the video you can see that it changes. We're going to go back to the old. It's kind of bland and gray. We're going to go to the new one and the blacks are black and the, the colors are more vibrant. Uh, things like that. So we'll leave that there and we'll close it. The other thing I usually do is brightness and contrast. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to pull it onto our video and let me turn color curves off and I'll show you guys what brightness and contrast does. Uh, the only thing you really need to worry about is if you're in like a dark area obviously you can turn the brightness up some but for contrast usually let me back this out and I'll do uh, 0 0.030 and we'll hit enter and you see what happened there it kinda did almost the same thing as color curves but it did it across the board it did it to the entire screen it didn't uh, give you the options that you would have in color curves. So let's uncheck it and see how it went back to that gray thing and then we recheck it and it goes back to 
uh, the more little vi more vibrant uh, look. Now, if you turn them both on, it's a little much because you're doing color curves and you're putting brightness and contrast on top of that. So if you uncheck it, you see how it pulls that back a little bit? So it looks a little bit more uh, appealing, so to speak. If you have them both on, it's a little much. So you can use both, and I would strongly suggest you do brightness and contrast first, and then grab, you know, if you do brightness and contrast, let me rephrase that, first, it's easier to set up your color curves afterwards because you've already got your contrast going then you can mess with your your color curves and get your colors a little bit popping a little bit more and you don't have to mess so much with the darks um, your channels you could change you know to specific channels uh, I could go to green and pull the green out of the screen I can make it a lot more vibrant things like that but we're not going to go into that stuff right now uh, that is basically the only two things I really mess with when I'm doing some gameplay footage. Uh, I'll add in effects if I'm going to put in motion blur or if I'm going to put in a gradient or something or uh, you know lens flare or, or things like that. But those are a little bit more advanced so to speak. If you just want some general tips this is probably as, as good as it's going to get. Uh, those two things will really really enhance your video quality. That's it guys. I really hope that this helped you and if you're not a Sony Vegas user let me know if you're an Adobe Premiere user I can go into Adobe Premiere as well and do a video on that it's basically the same concept the settings are just a little different and the places where you find things are a little different the names are not the same you know things like that but hopefully this did help you and I would love to see some video responses possibly to this with your settings changed uh, based on what I gave you guys and maybe it's going to help you uh, in your channel. That's it, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you all next time.